So today we're going to take you through a bit more with the machine learning software TensorFlow. And to start with, we're just going to go through the general principle of how all this works. So you have your machine learning model as shown here. That can then be compiled with TensorFlow and deployed to allow a microcontroller or another machine to make predictions based on that machine learning model, which then if deployed to a microcontroller, also allows you to record further data, which could then be sent back to some data storage, which can then be included in the next iteration of the machine learning model. So as you can see, we have quite a circular system with adaptive control from the predictions and sensor data being input back into the recording for the improved model in the future. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel if you enjoy this video and keep up to date with feature updates and new videos. So this is the overall structure which we're looking at, which looks quite complicated. So we'll break it up piece by piece. So to start with, we've already been through Visual Micro in Visual Studio using Arduino. So this is programming your code in the IDE. We've also seen a variety of different boards such as the SP32 and the Teensy and the Nano 33 IoT which can run a TensorFlow. We've seen in the instructable linked in the description that you can have version control systems and Azure cloud build systems to allow your development team to be in different areas as well as using the Visual Micro CLI and Arduino to perform the build and upload from the cloud system to your board. And finally, in a recent video, we covered how to do FTP services from your ESP32, so you can upload data back to data storage. So if we then send the data from data storage back to Azure, or our build service, we can also include Python and TensorFlow to allow us to include that data and rebuild the model as part of our build process to then be deployed through OTA back to the board. So this is the same cyclic relationship between data recorded and data being used in the model. So all we've done is started with the TensorFlow Lite ESP32 library example for Hello World as we're using the Rover DevKit module and we've included the ESP32 FTP client library as well. And most of this is very similar to the default Hello World and default OTA code, which you can include from the OTA example as well, to give us our Wi-Fi upload of new software. The difference is, is we have the normal TensorFlow part as shown here. But then below, because the model may not have all the data in, because our boards are teaching the model the data from their sensors, essentially, we have this extra bit of code where it's just going to, in this case, work through the sign values very slowly and upload them to the server. But it could be collecting weather data or temperature data or motion data to be included in the next iteration of the model, which will then be deployed back to this device. So we've already uploaded an OTA sketch to our board so we can contact it over the network and this computer is actually our Azure, Azure build server as well. So when Azure runs the build, it actually contacts this machine to perform it. Of course, that could be a completely different machine in a different location. So as shown in the instructable, you should end with a, a build pipeline set up and an agent configured. And we'll have the Visual Micro Builder as our main task. Here we have the agent running in the command line on our build machine. And then we have a script here, which will be linked in the description, which essentially performs our build. But before that, it runs our Hello World Python script. So we've taken a copy of the Hello World Python script from Collaboratory and put it onto our machine. And we've made a number of edits to this just to make it work with what we're doing here. Most of it's much the same and you'll need to install the dependencies as shown on the page linked in the description. And we're going to pull in the device data which has been sent back through FTP, push it through the Keras model and then create our, our model. 
one of the differences to note if you're running this on Windows instead of in Collaboratory is you'll need to have an installation of Bash. Uh, we've got it from MSYS2, which is included with the Expressive IDF. And this allows you to just do the final compilation to the data for your code. After that, because it'll have rewritten one of the files containing the model data in our sketch, then we have to run the Visual Micro Builder. And then once that's been completed, as we're using the ESP32, we're just going to run the Espota command line, which you can take from the output window when you perform your build in Visual Studio. There's, you can also have additional tasks like publishing artifacts back to Azure at the end or any other deployments. So we're just going to run this build agent now and that will send a request to the build machine which has got everything set up on it for Python and Visual Micro CLI and Arduino. And it essentially will just run that script. So here we can see it beginning. And as it's on the same machine I'm demonstrating this on, I haven't actually hidden away all of the charts that will pop up from TensorFlow to show you how the model training is going. So as in the Hello World example, if you just follow it through on Collaboratory, we have the charts popping up to show us how the data has been split up for training, testing and validation. And then it will train through all of the epochs required and show you the final model comparisons. And once that's completed, that's rewritten the model data within our sketch now. So our model's been rebuilt, compiled, and updated in our sketch. So then it's just got to run Visual Micro in the background through the CLI. And this is the data which has been rewritten by our Python script. So it's automatically re-included in our sketch for the next upload. So once the Visual Micro CLI is completed, this will then have generated a new set of binary files which can be redeployed to the boards as well. And it's also interesting with this approach that you could have developers in different places as well as testers and people gathering your data in different parts of either a building, a city or even the world and by purchasing a very simple piece of hardware potentially or it being sent to them you'd be able to all contribute towards the data in the model as well as be able to help perform comparisons between model predictions and reality on all of the endpoints. So it allows a very distributed team for whatever the reason with all the benefits of version control and work management as shown in Azure here. And our upload is completed and that's now gone to our board. So that's it and our LED will now be blinking in some fashion depending on how good the model was, um, which we'll show you now.